and I have another person joining me. I am very grateful that people have allowed me into their homes and the next person who has allowed me into their home is Roseanne McKenzie. Roseanne McKenzie is a very famous face and a voice. Ah! <laughs> You've seen, I remember you from the Vanish ads years ago, years ago. <laughs> so, but Roseanne's been on, on television. She's a TV presenter. Uh, was it Quella that you used to do? That's what I started with. That was my yeah. first one. Quella, yeah. I remember from Quella days. And so she's also a news anchor. She is an MC. Um, she's also a presenter on Jacaranda FM at the moment. And she is about to start a new television series. And this is going to air after it's already started. But at the time of interviewing, it's going live tomorrow. And it's called Big Hate Wat Sark Mark. Okay. So for those of you who are international viewers, that's business that matters. Okay. So Big Hate Wat Sark Mark. And it's going to be talking about COVID-19 and how to survive. And now I've got you online saying, talking about the exact same thing. But thank you. Welcome to our little thing. <laughs> I'm so excited to be chatting to you. I feel like I haven't seen you for the longest time. And you say that you remember me from the Vanish ads, but I have to tell all the people that are watching that Clive, I've known for 17 years because <laughs> Clive was my very first agent. So anything that I've done in my career, you should pat yourself on the map for because you were my very first agent when I lived in Cape Town and you were so compassionate and lovely and supportive and great. Stop, stop. This is about you. <laughs> so thank you. But you know, if it was 17 years ago, we were about five years old, weren't we at that Please. time? I, mean, I was a child star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a child agent, clearly. <laughs> well, thank you. That's great. I, I've always loved working with you and always being around you. And it's just lovely to see your face again and chat to you. Tell me about the show you're doing. Like how... When did it happen? Did they decide to suddenly do a show called Biesgeit with Sarkmark? Like two days after COVID struck, someone did it and it's just happened and you're running with it. No, so Biesgeit with Sarkmark is a production from the most amazing production company called Brand et al. And Brand et al approached me probably a, just under a year ago about oh. whether I would want to present on a business um, breakfast TV show and it's kind of been back and forth and the idea has has been there for a long time and then um we were supposed the, the 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 launch date was always going to be the 30th of May and then like COVID happened and I thought oh well you know it's now not going to happen and COVID happened and it just took off so we have been shooting obviously with the right permits and with the right safety and hygiene protocols so we've been shooting and chatting to business owners and looking at how they've had to adapt and how they've had to look at their businesses differently so covid it's kind of just convenient or um coincidental that yeah. we're launching during COVID time it was always going to launch um on the 30th of may and now we've actually got quite a nice angle to speak to so many business owners about how this has affected them, what are they going to do differently to make sure that they survive because people are struggling. So it's also a nice platform for people to come on and talk about their businesses and what, yeah. why they are cool. So I think even though the COVID um, chat is on top of everyone's mind now, these are like positive stories about what you, what you can do to make sure that you survive as a business owner. And if I can ask without scooping your storyline, what are the kind of things that businesses are doing? What kind of insights have you had that you can share with us? Because I'm sure there are a lot of business owners watching going, how the hell do I pivot or get clients during this whole time? Yeah. So most businesses that are able to do it, that I've, that I've spoken to, have actually done what you're doing. So if you wanted to chat to me pre-COVID, we would have gone somewhere and sat down and had a coffee or I would have come over to your home or wherever. So businesses that have got the opportunity to take their, their product online have done so to make it accessible to, to their client base. So I interviewed um, a woman who owns a biomedical beauty company and 
she is able to, and the people who work for her are able to still do skin consultations with products and all of that kind of thing, face to face through a computer screen. So oh. things like that, like businesses that maybe before wouldn't have thought about, for instance, a restaurant wouldn't have thought about doing deliveries because they're a sit down restaurant are now going, okay, um, maybe we should actually take our product to the people and make sure people can order online via an app or via a restaurant delivery service online or whatever. I have a friend of mine who runs a small catering company. They're a small company, but they are very, very busy. And obviously with all of this, events have stopped because we can't really gather unless it's 50 people in a church. Um, does that include the pastor? Or not. <laughs> it does. Uh, I have checked okay. it out. It includes the pastor. Okay. <laughs> so what they did, <laughs> it's a question that's been on my mind. So what they did, um, my friend Meg from the counter, who make the best brownies and the best fudge and the best burgers, they, they essentially their hands were cut off. They couldn't, their team couldn't work. They couldn't work. So everyone's always asking them about their recipes and they created an, a, a cookbook. They created a e-cookbook in a PDF format that you could order and that would go towards them paying their staff for the four or three weeks that people could not work at all. And now they've, they've changed their businesses. They're offering things that they wouldn't have before. And I think these things are going to stick even yeah. when COVID is more kind of not such a big factor. Yeah. And it, it's, it, that's amazing because businesses have, have been forced to become quick you know uh, I, I would talk to my partner Frank often and he used works in the agile space and it's all if you go into corporate everyone's agile you know and it's it's a vomitous <laughs> term but, agile and pivoting. yeah yes they, everyone pivots and, and they're all agile but this is really kind of shown like how agile are you you know because literally people have had to within a few days turn their businesses around and say okay how am I going to do this? Because, I mean, I look at there's certain hairdressers and hair salons who at level three now still can't operate. But I've, I've had, you know, they're going... That on, makes me so sad. My barber, <laughs> I'm just wondering, I've been like shooting with this hair that is driving me crazy. And I keep wondering if my barber has got some kind of ordainment in something as a yeah. As a, yeah, you got to worship okay. at the salon. I'm worshiping yeah. because I can't, but sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. I totally get it. So, but you know, you've got hairdressers who suddenly doing online tutorials and, you know, stuff like that. And that they're offering an online lessons, you know, it's forced people to, to pivot. And for some people, it's just forced them into, into absolute despair. And I think understandably, yeah. you know, like to go between the two. So it must be an interesting space to be in to, to interview these businesses. But let's talk about you and COVID. Um, you mm -hmm. have managed to stay working quite solidly throughout the COVID, even through the lockdown. Yes, I have been very lucky to be able to work during lockdown. I know so many people that haven't because of the nature of the work they do. And especially being in the entertainment industry, yeah. people that are in events or people that are musicians or waiters or anything like that. Like, I mean, my husband um, runs a music center in Soweto called the Morris Isaacson Center for Music, but he's also a classical musician. He plays the French horn in the Philharmonic Orchestra. So they've had their winter season canceled essentially because first of all, there's 60 people in the orchestra and obviously we can't go and watch things at the moment. So I know firsthand what it's like for, from having watched my spouse have to now not to be able to do what he loves. And I think that's affected a lot of people. And that's, that's, that's what makes me realize how lucky I am to have worked throughout. So Jacaranda FM was really great from the very beginning. So I've actually been, had been working from home for a week before the official lockdown was announced. So the last time, that I went out was the, before the new kind of relaxed regulations came in was the 20th of March. Wow. So they wanted us to broadcast from home to stay safe. Luckily, once again, I have a recording set up here in my office and I was able to, to do that. So 
for the first couple of weeks, I was doing quite a few voiceovers and, and working from home, essentially. And then when we moved down to level four, I was able to start shooting again on one of the things, Beersigheid Bad Saakmark, and also um, some commercials that I've been working on and all of that stuff. So I have been, been lucky enough to, um, to still have an income and still have work, and I'm super grateful for that. Yeah. How have you coped then with, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with that because some of the people in the entertainment industry I'm talking to, they, you know, they literally are sitting there saying, well, thank goodness their spouse is working um, and not in the entertainment industry. Um, but how has it been in terms of lockdown then with, because you've got two children, two young children, um, a gorgeous boy and a girl. And um, has, has your husband been then staying to look after them? Because they've obviously been kind of kept indoors. And how have they been coping with it? So I think, Clive, as much as, as we've struggled with the, the Afrikaans word for the lockdown is so cool. It's inperking. So it's like the, like you can, like, you know, <laughs> like inperking, like you're ingepakt, yeah. you are limited. So as much as we've been struggling with that, they have struggled with it as well because, and, and even more so because they don't really understand it. Like they'll say, we can only go to whatever kid friendly restaurant when lockdown is over. So they, they know, but I mean, it's been tough for them because they miss their friends, they miss school, they miss their own routine. And it's this kind of unseen thing that's keeping them at home. But I mean, it's been, it's been it's been good actually to have some time to be at home with them. Um, Chris and I've been sharing the homeschooling, and both their schools have been great in terms of sending material and making sure the classes are accessible online, and just staying in touch with the kids and saying, "Listen, school is still here, and we miss you guys, and we can't wait to have you back when it's safe for you to come back." So. All of that kind of support in terms of their school has been there. But I mean, James turned six on the 18th of April and we had to have a lockdown birthday party. So oh, yeah. there were no kids here that would normally be running around and jumping on the trampoline and, you know, having a birthday. So he turned six with just me and Chris and Fallon. Obviously, we had cake and yummy things to eat, but it's, it's not the same. So we've been coping. It's been, it's been hard. I, I won't lie it has been tough not being able to yeah, just sure. take them to the park or james is, um loves to ride his bike so luckily he's got space here at home but it's not the same as being able to ride at the bike park or wherever we go you know yeah absolutely i mean i'm sure i don't think we we realize uh, th there was on Facebook, th th they had a lot of, of memes going around where you had to ask your kids about what is COVID-19 and what is, you know, and, and these kids would answer, it's, you know, it's, it's when the president tells you to stay inside and it's all these like huge sponsors. And, and I, I, I did a bit of stalking, if that's okay. okay. And I found your son online. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I hope everyone can hear this and, and, and that it plays well, but this, this was on your telephone and I, I just, why I want to play it is, and I'm not going to play the whole thing, but because firstly, he's just so adorable, but it kind of shows you just how COVID is top of mind. This, he found your phone and just did this. Yes. So he is now in this phase where he likes to take photos and, and his tablet isn't enough. He must now use either my phone or Chris's phone. And one Saturday morning I was running on the treadmill. Um, and obviously my phone wasn't with me. So, um, and then when I got out of the shower, I was like, what is this? And I was going through these photos and I clicked on this video and this is what, it was. Well, let's play it and let's let, hopefully everyone be able to hear this. Hello, my name is James and I am going to talk about coronavirus. And you must stay at home and not go in your car anyway. Okay, I am here in my Spider Man shirt. <laughs> and, and also, I'm in my mom and dad's room. <laughs> he's turning into a little you look at that he's a presenter <laughs> <laughs> reporting with context telling us yeah, that look at what i'm wearing and that's rude 
telling us what he's wearing. Yes. I, I follow he's giving you us on Instagram. All the info we need. Yeah, well, I follow you on Instagram and Facebook, and you are so often are showing us what you're wearing. So he clearly gets it from <laughs> <laughs> Well, so. I, I, I fear for the world if there's another me in the making. <laughs> I really do. No, he's gorgeous. <laughs> so tell me, how have you kept them contained during this time? How have you kept them resilient? Um, because obviously it is hard on them. So how... How has, how, what kind of practical stuff have you put in place? So we make sure that they don't have only screen time, that they don't just kind of only watch their iPads or only sit and watch TV. Obviously they do their schoolwork and luckily there's two of them. And now James is six, Fallon is two. So they actually play together quite well. And they've, they've got this little world, like sometimes Chris and I just, here we'll be in the kitchen and they'll be in the tv room and we'll just hear these little conversations that they have with each other or the, the games that they play so they they play with their little toy cars or their dolls or whatever and they they've created this little and it's it's great it's actually like i, I see them together now and I'm, I'm very glad that chris and i decided to have two kids because they really do take care of each other and they do they do entertain each other and they really like each other they love each other very very much so that's been amazing to be able to witness that has been really good but we we spend a lot of time with them so we'll be playing outside or we'll be reading to them or just doing family things like making pancakes or they made me cupcakes for mother's day or just to keep them as entertained and stimulated in the house because that's the only place we can go you know like i mean they they want to go have a play date at so-and-so's house but you can't so it's it's tough to to keep them um contained it has been tough but it's i'm glad they've got each other yeah great i mean it's and it's that video uh, when I saw it, I mean, it's hilarious and it's lovely and it's, you know, so cute of what he's doing, but it shows you how top of mind Corona is, even in a child's life, how yeah. they're so aware of the effect. And, you know, his words are, you can't drive anywhere in your car. You know, it's like, there is a very much a, an awareness that we are, and what's the word? In the park. In the park. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that we are kind of contained in this. I, I know with my sister's children as well, when the second two weeks were announced, when Sarah Ramaphosa announced those, she had to tell her daughter, who's also six years old, and um, her daughter was devastated. She just cried, and she was like, because she just wanted to go back to school, and it was just, she couldn't see the fairness in this, and why couldn't she see her friends, and my sister had to obviously very gently take her through this process of understanding, mm -hmm. but it must be really hard for them still to understand this world where they're stuck to some extent, and, you know, it's, yeah. kids are creative and want to play, and they can't, you know, with other kids, That's you know. Cool. Yeah, yeah so. but the thing is, like, what we've, what we've noticed is that um, with James, like, he hasn't really said much about it. But I, I do remember one night very clearly, um, I was putting him to bed and I was giving him a cuddle before bed. And he said, I don't like coronavirus. It's so boring here at home oh. because his whole life is different now you know, and he's only had six years of life. So it's all so different. And I think it's going to be a thing that they've lived through. I think it's going to be a thing that we've all lived through. Yeah. We, we lived through coronavirus and, and everything that, it, that came with it. Yeah. And tell me what has come with it for you. Um, it can't all of it, although you've had work and but for you and Chris in lockdown, what, is, what has come along with, with COVID for you guys? So we, just in a, like a, on a less kind of positive note, um, Chris's parents are in the UK, as is his family, because he's from there. His um, grandmother got it, and she unfortunately mm -hmm. passed away um, from COVID. And my mom is an NHS nurse, so she's on the front lines every day. So there is, there is in the back of my mind all the time a thought about 
is my mom okay? And I know she's okay. She's a superhero, but she's also my mom. Mm. But she's also a nurse. So she, and she takes her job very seriously. She's very good. So, like, I do have thoughts like that. And also, we don't have our close family in this country. So we had planned to go and see them in July. And that, that's now not happening. So on a practical level, for me, I don't know when I'm going to see my mom again. And my mom is, is aside from the three people that I share a house with, my whole world. So it's put the brakes on a lot of on a lot of things and things that are fundamental seeing your family is a fundamental thing it's part of who you are it's part of it's part of life you know is is sharing that life with your family so it, that that has been some of the tough stuff that we've we've had to deal with and also from so far away mm. No, I can imagine uh, to to deal with and and I'm sorry to hear about Chris's um grand, you say grandmother, who passed grandmother, yeah, I think. grandmother, yeah. I, I I mean that is devastating, and it must have been, it it must make COVID very real for you guys, because for some extent, I sit here and COVID is this thing that's happening to people in the Cape, <laughs> you know, or it's you yeah. know it might happen you know in Balfour Park, check as they they had a, a a case, you know, but it's it's quite removed, but it obviously mm-hmm. is quite in your vicinity yeah sure. so it just it's re- like you said it just it's very real for us yeah and um how how is chris then with the whole thing how has lockdown been for him if it's obviously been affected family and and affected his support structure yeah he is so just one of those people that just gets on with it so when all of the lockdown um rules and regulations were announced the, obviously the first thing that that was going to change for him was that the music center was going to be closed down because it's kids and it's large groups of people and yeah so what he did actually for those first couple of weeks him and the team at morris isaacson center for music they worked tirelessly to be able to get the teachers set up that they could um teach remotely so that they could either teach on a whatsapp call or on a zoom session and that is not the the center is not in a place where the kids have got resources coming out of their ears so i for the first couple of weeks he just kind of worked and worked and worked with the team to try and get that set up and i think now he's just trying to literally take every day as it comes which i'm doing as well i mean like I have been working and I have been lucky, um, but it's it's also not a normal um, situation that we find ourselves in. So sometimes, like I know I've seen on social media that a lot of people are having like these really vivid dreams and really nightmarish things because it's that kind of uncertainty that weighs on you so heavily. Mm-hmm. And I've I've definitely definitely felt that, and I think. If, excuse me if I'm being honest he he has as well but I mean we've got we've got kids we've got to we've got to just keep going you know and how do you keep going what kind of coping mechanisms have you managed to put in place to keep your structure um, and family structure together the structure is is actually a key player in how we've managed to not fall apart like we still get up in the morning. The kids still go to bed at the same time um, that they would have done. We try and do their activities with them from the tutorials that we get from the school, just so that they don't feel like they have missed out on on everything. Like everything has changed. So I think for me, um, routine also plays a big role. So for the first three weeks, I was training and working from home and just trying to maintain a sense of normality um and then when the extension was announced i was like no i can't Uh, i don't know i don't like this is not good like i understand why it has been extended i understand it and i support it but i i really struggled i really struggled and i think getting out of that place was about getting the routine back and the structure and going, okay, 
this is for a good cause and it's going to end at some point whether it becomes that the virus is just endemic and we live with it as it is or it's there will be a vaccine which i think everyone is hoping and praying for um but we still we still have to live like it's not it's not pleasant but it's not the worst that it could be and i'm very aware of the privilege and the 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 great position that we are in 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 yeah. this pandemic i really am yeah um it, it's it's been interesting doing these conversations i've chatted to a few people now um before i've chatted to you and it's amazing the kind of themes that that keep coming out and one of the themes about you know and i always been bringing it back to resilience and it's probably irritating everyone that i use the word resilience but it's so important just that that exactly that that structure you know so much of what i've been reading about is is that even to be resilient as an entrepreneur for example is and who's working from home is to create structure people companies where the culture is is not an effective culture or where employees aren't engaged one of the first things that we in ter terms of I, I run a training company and what we'll go in is look at the structures that are in place because what structure exists or doesn't exist creates anxiety if there's the, and one of the biggest thing as humans we we actually really like routine you know as much as we might fight it and you know but people are creatures of habit it's just inbred in us and i think that that is so important that intrinsically you found that as structure is or is a coping mechanism and it's probably been very important for your kids um mm -hmm. to to feel that structure so i think that's amazing and then the other theme that's that's kind of come through a lot is the sense of it's not great but we accept and i'm grateful because i know i have when other people don't but it's still shit <laughs> yeah. you know so you know it is it's it's kind of we're in this mixed space of it is what it is i have to make do i have to yeah. deal with it i have to wear a face mask while I'm presenting the news or whatever you do. I've seen, you know, I have to do these things that are completely foreign to me, but I have to adapt. And it's, it's amazing when we do choose to cope, when we do choose to put in structure, when we do choose to adapt, how resilient we become. But when we fight against, you know, if your kids were fighting against the structure, your, your world would probably be completely different. Um, with it. And I think it's been so amazing, these kind and that's why I've loved having these conversations and talking to you is because it just reminds me that we have to go back and work constantly on saying, how am I going to make this better while accepting that this is what it is? Yeah. I, um, I, I like your thing about what you said about you're so grateful that you, you have, that your situation isn't as bad as it could be. But that doesn't mean that it's not shit. Yeah. You know? Like it doesn't take away from from um how how badly you're feeling. And I do I do um talk about this quite a lot, but I, I this is something that I learned when I had postnatal depression. Like for so long I I, I didn't wanna actually admit it and I and it got worse and worse and worse. And for so long I just didn't wanna say anything because I had to be grateful because I had a healthy child and people struggle for so long to have babies and and some babies are born with uh, defects or diseases or disabilities and here I have this perfectly healthy little girl and I'm still struggling and I think that like I think of it as like a gratitude hangover where it's just don't say anything because just be grateful just so it's hanging here always what you like feel the pressure of having to be grateful all the time you can be grateful and still be going through a shitty time absolutely and the thing is and i'm loving what you're saying because the the, the power of coping is in expressing and when you express that you're actually struggling there's power in that while we're trying to bring in coping mechanisms that aren't authentic, that are a false self, you pretending during postnatal depression, everything's fine. 
fine. It's all fine. Whereas inside you're crumbling until you get to that moment of saying, this is not right. Only then can release happen. And I'm sure you experienced that in your depression. Is, is that Absolutely. you had to come to a point of verbalizing it or acknowledging it. And that's why I think it is so important that we don't all live in this. And I've seen some people on Facebook and they're all like, you know what? I'm so like, look, I bake banana bread and I, you know, the, the, I've got this thing locked down. And that's why I want to have these discussions where we can actually say, listen, guys, this is terrible. This is devastating. I, we're thinking about a, our mortality. I mean, what you've just said about your family situation where we worried for people, we, you know, it's like we can't walk around the, it's, our kids are seeing this and it must be, it's like Armageddon out there for them to watch. It is terrible, but we need to be incredibly grateful because we are going to have moments with kids that we're going to cherish that we might not have had before. Yeah. We're going to have moments of connection with our spouses that we might not have had before. And we, we might also have insights about ourselves that we might not have had before and realize that we're a lot more resilient than we think we are. Yeah. So what you say, I, you say, we've lived through COVID. Yes. And I think that that, that is going to be some of the positive stuff we can take away from this is I actually was interviewing um, a musician yesterday on Beersigheit with Sarkmark, episode four. <laughs> um, I was interviewing uh, Jacques de Villiers from Yoshan Nadi Rian, and he's a musician. He performs for a living. That's his, that's his job. That's his income. So one of the reasons that we were chatting to him was about how do you survive this when, when you can't actually perform the job that you do to make money. And he was actually saying they've just recently had a baby. And he said, if, I, if, if, it, if it wasn't for COVID, I wouldn't have had these two months at home to get to know my newborn baby because I would have been on the road. I would have been doing concerts most nights and I would have, you know, and, and he said, well, maybe this is a, and I, I just found it such a refreshing take. And he said, maybe this is a way for me now to, to start looking at things differently. Do I have to be driving everywhere? Maybe I need to reduce my carbon footprint. Maybe I need to look at doing online concerts in the little towns that I can't get to normally, but now I can get to them because it's just, it's here. It's, it's via a screen. It's via, and I, I love that. I thought it was such a refreshing positive take on what we can actually gain from this as opposed to what's been taken away from us. Uh, absolutely. It's, I, I've been struggling to find a name for this like little series that I'm doing, you know, cause I'm now, you know, an impresario of YouTube. Um, <laughs> I have a YouTube channel apparently with like 10. So, <laughs> so yes. Um, so that's the whole point of people subscribe. Um, so the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, but so, but that's why I called it coping with COVID is because we use the word coping skills and mm. people assume that we just cope or we don't, but don't realize that coping is a skill we learn and that this is a time to actually learn skills to cope. And part of the skills is to find that gratitude, but not to be the fake, you know, it's about finding those healthy skills. So drinking 10 bottles of wine in a day is not a healthy coping skill. It's coping, but not a health. So what kind of resilient skills can I bring into my life? And part of it is saying, it's not great, but I can do this. I'm going to bring structure in. It's easier to just let your kids do what they want to during the day. It would be fine, but you've chosen a skill to, to allow them to cope. And I think that's yeah. incredibly powerful for us to remember as human beings and to take that out of COVID is, is that when I'm not coping, what skills am I needing? to put coping back in place. And sometimes that's and also, ability. Yeah. yeah. I think also what we need to, to, to realize is that when, when, this is, when this is over and you've, you've maybe not coped so well or you've developed a coping mechanism that's not very healthy, when this is over, that's coming with you. Yeah. Yeah. But you need so to be self-forgiving about that. Not with external things. 
to bag baggage. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you do need to be self forgiving about that because when we talk about it being a coping skill, it's like, I know you're an avid runner and, and you train up a storm. And, but the first time you started getting fit, you just walked around the block. So, mm -hmm. you know, but now you can run a 10 K. So what we need to realize is that, and we need to go easy on ourselves is that we're allowed to crumble. As yeah. long as we're working at starting to walk around the block in these coping yeah. skills, we don't. And that's what I want to have these conversations about is that I don't want us to pretend that everything is rosy, but how can we help each other just start until eventually, yeah. you know, if I start walking around the block, maybe one day I'll be doing a 10 K with you. Um, and it's the mm -hmm. same with coping skills is that it is possible to learn to cope. It, even though it's not something that's inherent in our nature. Some people, yeah. some people run faster than other people. Some people are better just inherently with coping with stuff. I'm shit at coping with things. I fall apart. I'm emotional. I wear my heart and my sleeve. Hopefully I'm learning to be more resilient by choosing to be more resilient. Does that, any of that make sense? So I just felt like- It does, I, it does I, make I, sense. And I, I especially like what you said about being self-forgiving. Like- you have to, and I agree with that. I do agree with that, a hundred percent. That if you have um, not coped all that well, it's okay, as long as you survive, get out of it on the other side, and then take your few steps around the block again. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Rosanna, let's start heading towards wrapping up because I know that you've probably got, the, um, we're recording this in the evening and I know you've probably got supper times and bath times and everything coming up. I want to just say thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. Is there anything else that I've left out that you want to say? Anything you want to say to moms, dads out there, people who love you and adore you and watch you on television? Um. I do want to say to everyone who watches this that we're going to come out the other side. Like, we might come out very different. We might come out with a lot of things changed. But this isn't, it's not how, I don't think this is how the chapter is going to end. I think it's, it's, going to, it's going to be better. And I know that's like the wackest thing. People are like, what a load of old, like, what a motivationally thing to say like but it, it doesn't mean it has to be the best but it's going to be better than yeah than what it is it's that whole analogy of you've got to ride the wave you know the, the fact is is that you're going to fall over we're going to do all of those things but the wave is going to come to a point where it meets the beach and we've just got to keep riding that wave you're absolutely right Roseanne, thank you for the time i've loved chatting to you it's always good to see you so thank what you a for no, thank you for giving up the time. I really appreciate it. I know I've taken time away from husband and babies. And so, yeah, please give them all a big squeeze from me. And I look forward to seeing you without a mask on and out of a screen and bumping into it at the gym like we used to and being all yes. normal human beings <laughs> again. I look forward to that. Thank you so much, Clive. Cool. Thanks, Roseanne. Take care.